Speaking of Muslims and Muslim threats, there was a jihadist being interviewed the other day over in the uh, remnants of Syria. And as he was speaking about how, of course, it's Allah's will that they conquer the world, in the far distant background you hear somebody fire a mortar round. Take a listen at what happens next to uh, Ahmed uh, as, uh, as he doesn't pay any attention to that, uh, that shallow noise from the background. <laughs> Oh, 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 Allah Akbar, oh, 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 yes, you could say it was a bit of a bad day in ISIS land, but you know, Allah wills it. So there you go. Uh, you wonder if that guy got his 72 virgins. Here's a question for them. What if they get there and they're all skags? 923, Bill Colley with you on Top Story on News Radio 1310, KLIX and News Radio 1310.com. 38, I want to thank you for joining me this morning. And you can reach our program by dialing 736 0300. That's 736 0300. So here's a guy bragging Oh, I have beheaded 70 people today. I have raped uh, 28 female slaves. And we are going to do more when we get to the next city, and I will then crucify all the Christians. Boom! Hello, Ahmed. God is calling. He's pretty much toast at this point. I have to say, when, when, when these people scream about Allah's will, they, they tend to forget. They, they claim whenever anything bad happens in another part of the world, God did it to us. And yet when that crane fell on that, uh, that mosque in, uh, what was it, Mecca? and killed a couple hundred people a few months ago. They didn't apparently consider that all as well. And when something like that happens, it's not a, Then they just say, death to Israel, death to America. Zionist conspiracy. Well, yeah, but God allowed it to happen. No, death to America, death... I read today where one of the mad mullahs in Iran is saying that the United States must apologize to the Iranian people. <laughs> For what? If we had a... you. Know, Remember how Ronald Reagan dealt with them? Ronald Reagan pretty much said, look, I'm going to be president in a few weeks, and when I'm president, you don't want to, you don't want to be a mad mullah in Iran because I am going to come and I am going to, be, I am going to give you the what for. And they backed right down. Yeah, we have nobody today willing to talk in those terms to these people. And if we told them, look, if you keep doing what you're doing, yes, you may build a bomb, but then if you plan to show us yours, we'll be showing you ours. And the stench of 50 million of you in the atmosphere, burning in the atmosphere, is going to be just, just, just wretched. So what's your choice? How would you like to live? We have a caller with us. You're up next. You're on the air with Bill Colley on Top Story. Good morning. Yeah, what if they get there and they're all male virgins? Uh, probably wouldn't bother a lot of those guys. Hey, look, 72 donkeys. I am in paradise. Thank you much for the call, sir. I'll live with 72 pigs, on the other hand. Oh, no, I, 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 I am going to convert to Christianity. Can I do that now in the afterlife? You're on the air. at News Radio 1310, KLIX, NewsRadio1310.com, and what's on your mind? Well, I had to call back and let you know, you know who owned that train that fell on those people? Bin Laden. Osama Bin Laden's <laughs> yeah. family. Yes. <laughs> That's no BS. <laughs> I, I, I'm telling you, man, it is, it is, oh, man, isn't that something? That's all I needed. See ya. <laughs> all right. Thank you much for the telephone call. Bill Colley with you this morning on Top Story 38, coming up on 926. There are a couple of things i got to share with you. I mentioned earlier, and, and if you could bear with me for a couple of minutes, take a listen to this. I came across two items today that I thought were worthwhile. And when you think about how the liberals in media, and yes, 93% of your reporters in this country and editors are either Democrats or even more to the left, Washington Examiner, Paul Bedard, Media Graveyard, Daily Newspapers down nearly 80%. Hard news in danger. Hard news is in danger, said a new report from the Brookings Institution. Hmm, we better send out Superman and Batman. Then it goes on to say there are half as many people reporting on the news than four decades ago. Well, that means half as many liberals, right? 
daily newspapers have gone from a high of nearly 1,800 in 1945 to about 400. Circulation per capita has dropped below 15%. Kind of just makes you, you know, want to go over there and walk into the Times News and give them all a big group hug. Well, that's what they're doing over there most days anyway. That's how they start their day, from what I understand. Uh, you hope they all do wear their deodorant. Kumbaya. After they sing a few bars of that, then they go out and think, all right, how many Republicans can we get today? There's more to this story, and I want to share this with you. It says, some of the findings are, number one, hard news is in danger. Well, you know, if you're doing it with a liberal bent every day, of course it is. Who wants to put up with a bias? Number two, television is still important. <laughs> I'm sure television is very happy to know that. Number three, and so is radio. Well, that makes us all warm and friendly here. Number four, news is now digital. Number five, social media allows news and news to go viral. Uh, you might need a shot for that. And number six, for the younger generation, news is delivered through comedy. And you wonder why they are out on college campuses claiming that somebody said something naughty to them but hurt their feelings and that the college has to be reformed and everyone has to resign to make them feel better. Yeah, well, you know, as we've said earlier, some of these people are two beers short of a six-pack. Uh, Quickly, I want to remind you, if you're listening to this program this morning, God bless you. That means that your hearing is in good shape. On the other hand, if you're worried that you may not be able to listen to the program any longer, let me share with you, you need to give a call to our friend, Dr. Christine Pickup. She's a doctor of audiology in Rupert, Idaho. It's called Mott Harrison Audiology. Figure out why it's in the background. You know, you drive through town. And, oh, okay, you see that. You understand what I'm talking about. She's at 1218 9th Street, unit number two. Telephone number is 208-312-0957. Or you can go online, mountharrisonaudiology.com, and get all sorts of details. Did you know that the health of the inner ear is affected by your cardiovascular and your kidney health? The inner ear is very sensitive to changes in your blood supply. If you've had recent heart problems or kidney problems, you should have your hearing checked and you should have it checked right away. Uh, so just a reminder, there are people out there who are willing to help you in those situations, and, and and it's a free screening that you can get there. Beyond that, you know, obviously she has to make a living, and uh, she'll do her best to restore your hearing or to help you get through something as critical as that happens to be. Coming up on 929, we've got just, this is a very fast-moving program today, and I, I do apologize for that. <clears throat> All right, well, you know, I mean, we can't sit here all day. If I started interrupting Rush Limbaugh, people would think I was John Kasich. The mainstream media are suffering from freedom envy. This from the Daily Signal, written by Peggy Noonan, former Reagan speechwriter. She says, back in 2005 when the Internet came along, here were some of the things liberal media people were saying about it, especially the bloggers. They were calling them salivating morons, scalp hunters, moon howlers, trophy hunters, sons of Senator McCarthy, rabid, blog swarm. These pseudo-journalist lynch mob people. These were some of the descriptions they gave. She says, the problem is, is that those media folks today are the ones who are looking around the corner and realizing that it's the blogosphere that has basically given them a paddling. And they don't know what to do about it. But they get angry and they just go out and assault Republicans. Well, more details coming up about a story that we wanted to share with you today. The future of Common Core in jeopardy. We'll tell you why. And you know what? A lot of people say that's a good thing. 9.30 and 39.